This is Mike Ken again. Going through a series of videos on menus, but four of the examples have to do with functions and procedures. So we just looked at payroll without using any extra subs or functions. I now want to open up payroll with function. So let me drill down and launch the program. And this program really does the same thing as the previous payroll program did. It lets me type in hours and rate and calculate their pay. So let me run the program and show this to you. So I'm going to work 60 hours at $30 an hour and my total pay is going to be $2,100. I'm going to show you Mike's pay in a little bit and the get out of here button is still the same. It lets you get out of here. Now let's open up the code window for payroll. So that's button calc. Now button calc looks a little different because button calculator is going to be more of the manager now calling two other subs to do the work. One of the subroutines is actually functions. This function is called error check and error check is going to return a value back to button calculate click and it's either going to send back true or false. If there is an error it's going to send back true, in which case we want to say exit sub because the user didn't type in good data. We can't do the math. The second function we're going to have is called payroll. Now payroll, we're going to send hours and rate down to payroll. It's going to calculate the pay and send it back to desk pay. So now we're much more like a manager asking our workers to do the work for us and report back to us. So error check. Here it is. I have to scroll down in my code window till I get to error check so I can show you error check and it's a function so I say function instead of sub in fact it has end function at the end of it instead of end sub so the thing about functions is functions send back one value so in this case this function is going to send back a boolean why is it going to send back a boolean because I decided it should send back a boolean. I wrote this function and I said I need to send back true if there's an error. I'm going to send back false if there's no error. That's the only two values this function needs to send back. So let's look at what error check actually does. It tries to do a try catch on hours to see if it can get that. If not, it's going to do a message box just like we did before it's going to put the focus in the text box that caused the error but now instead of saying exit sub it's going to say return true that's how I tell the function to send back true I could have said return false but there's an error so I want to send back true now why is true an error because as the programmer I decided that true meant error false meant no error I, I could have done it the other way around but then I'd had to write my if statement at the top of my code in the command button the opposite way. So it's really six and one half dozen of the other. So then what am I going to do? I'm going to try to get the pay rate and turn it into a decimal. And if that fails, once again, after I give them the error messages, I'm going to say return true. Now I'm going to do some data validation. I'm going to say, is the pay rate legal? We got to pay them at least $7.25 an hour. If it's not, if it's less than 725, I'm going to do message box. I'm going to do txt rate dot focus. I'm going to say return true. Now, finally, my last error check is if the hours is less than zero, or if the hours is greater than 168, I'm going to give them an error message, set the focus, return true. Now, if if I get past all these errors, I'm going to send back false. So that's how the function error check works. Now if I want to create a function by the way all you do is you come down to the bottom of your code and you say function if I could spell it right and I'll make a function called Bubba. Now as soon as I press enter it adds in function for me. Now it's it's giving me an error right now because I have to say as something. So if, if I want Bubba to return a decimal I'd say as decimal. And then in my code, somewhere at the end of Bubba, I'd have to say return. How about I return 25D? Okay, then I'm saying send back a 25. So I don't need Bubba, so Bubba's going away. Bubba, you're out of here.
Now, let's go up to my command button and put a breakpoint right here where we call error check and run the code. So I'm going to run payroll. I'm going to put in 60 hours, $30 an hour, and say payroll. Now my code's going to pause just before it calls error check. Now I want to go into error check so I can see what's going on. So remember on your debug menu, you've got step into and step over. So on my compiler, step into is F11. On yours, it might be shift F8. But go look at your debug menu. I'm going to say step into. So boom, it jumps down to error check. Now I can start single stepping my code by using F11 or F10. In this case, it doesn't matter because there's nothing else to step into. But I'll say uh, F10. It's going to do my first try. That worked. It's going to do my second try for pay rate. That worked. It's going to do the range check. Yep, pay rate is greater than 725 an hour. It's going to check my hours, which is between 0 and 168. So then we're going to return false, which is going to make my program jump back to error check. So it's going to skip over the exit sub. Tell my program to continue. This time I'm going to put a typo in. I'm going to say 60, and I hit the letter Y on the back of that accidentally. Now if I hit payroll, when it steps in, I'm going to hit F11 to step in. It's going to try to do this try. It's going to fail, so it's going to catch it. It's going to pop up the message box saying, please enter a number for hours. Put the focus. This time it's going to return true. So when it returns true, it's going to do the exit sub and not do the math. And look where my cursor is. Now I can correct it. But let's say uh, I want my pay rate to be $3 an hour. Okay, payroll. So once again, what's going to happen? It's, I'm going to hit F11 to step in. Okay, both of my try catches worked. No errors. But my pay is too small. Message box. Set focus. Return true. So now it's going to put the uh, F5 to continue. It puts my cursor in the box with an error. Let's go back to 30. But I worked really hard this week. It's $200. I worked 200 hours. At least that's what I'm telling my boss. So I'm going to step into error check. My try catches are going to work. My pay rate is greater than 725, but it's going to catch on greater than 168. It's going to exit that sub. It's going to send back. It's going to send back true which is going to cause me to do the exit sub right here. So that's how the error checking works. Let's go back to 60 hours. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to get out of the program now. So that, that's how this error check works. All my error checking code is now moved in to a function whose job is just to figure out if there's any errors and send back false if there's no error. Now. That means once we get to here, I don't have to have try catches anymore because I've already made sure what's in the text box for hours and the text box for rate is a valid number. So I can just grab those two values and then I'm going to call payroll and send hours to payroll and hours to rate. It's going to do all the math for the payroll, send back the pay, which I'm going to put into the label. So let's go look at payroll. I'm going to step down to payroll. Now you see it's a function, right? So functions have to return one value, so it ends with as decimal. I'm get, this time I'm sending back dollars and cents. But inside the parentheses now, you see I'm going to accept by value des h as decimal and by value des r as decimal. So I'm going to accept two decimal values. What by val means is these values are being copied into the function, so the function cannot directly change them. The other choice we have is by ref, and in the last example, 
where we do payroll as a procedure, I'll explain the differences between by val and by ref. And oh, by the way, this underscore right here just let me break my function definition to two lines. If if I was to, I could do it this way, I can do it all in one line. But if I hit that underscore and put this on the second line, I can line all my parameters up. Now another thing I want to show you is the first thing being passed into this function is hours. And in the function, I'm giving the hours a nickname, desh. And then in the function, the second thing being passed in is des hour. Let's go back up and look at the command button. So in the command button, though, the first thing I'm sending in is des hours. The second thing I'm, push, I'm pushing to the function is des rate. So the names of the variables you're passing don't have to be the same up here where we're passing them as they are down in the function when we're receiving them. They can be different names. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on this line where I call payroll and run the program. And once again, we'll do 60 hours at $30 an hour, and I'll say payroll. So this time it gets all the way down to payroll. It called error check. There was no errors. I got my hours, which is a 60. I got my rate, which is a 30. So you see I'm going to pass a 60 in the first position, and I'm going to pass a 30 in the second position. So I'm going to hit F11 to step into. Now remember, on your debug menu, it may not be F11. It may be Shift F8. So now we're coming into desk payroll. So you see that desk H got the 60 and desk R got the 30. So everything's good. So I'm going to step through my code one line at a time. It says if hours is greater than 40, which it is, calculate the regular pay. So my regular pay is $1,200. Then it's going to calculate my overtime, which is only the hours above 40, which is why I go hours minus 40. So that's $900. I'm going to add those two together. So my total pay is $2,100. And then I'm going to say return pay. Now the problem with a function is it can only return one thing. In my previous example, I could show you both regular pay and overtime pay separately because I had both things in that sub. Here I just got to send back the total pay. Now. When I do the last example, we can send two things to the sub and get two things out by parameter passing. And that's by using by ref. I'll show you that later. By the way, Visual Basic allows you to also set the return value by saying name of function, desk payroll equals. So this is called desk payroll. So right here I said desk payroll equals. I don't like to do it that way. I like to say return desk pay. That's how C++ does it. And there's no use learning two different ways to do something if one of them is different from all the other programming languages. So we're actually going to use the return statement. I tell the program to continue, and it sends back $2,100. Now, we need to look at Mike's pay, OK? Hey, Mike's making a lot of money, $9,000. Let's go into the code window. I'm going to get rid of my breakpoint that's in button calculate click and let's go into Mike's pay so Mike's pay I'm calling desk payroll but you see I'm passing it a 30 and I'm passing it 300 so I'm gonna pass it 30 hours and I'm gonna pass it three hundred dollars an hour hey it's good work if you can get it I, I wish I made three hundred dollars an hour it doesn't quite work that way so let's run the program I got a breakpoint set and I'll click Mike's pay. So you see it's paused right here. It's getting ready to pass a 30 and a 300. I'll hit F11 to step into payroll. So now you see Des H got the 30 and Des R got the 300. Step down. I don't have any overtime. So it's going to do regular pay. And my regular pay is $9,000. My overtime is zero. Add the two together and I'm going to return $9,000 back to Mike. So you see now I'm back in Mike. Despay, as soon as I run this, finish this line of code, Despay has 9,000. That's what I'm going to put into label pay. 
So now you see label pay's got the 9,000 in it and I made $9,000. So functions are for divide and conquer. This is how you divide programs into parts so different programmers can write them. It might be my job to write a library of 50 functions that are going to be running in the background to calculate the pay, to figure out how much social security with withholding is, to figure out how much withholding pay is, to take out deductions for insurance. I've got to write all these different functions and then you have a different programmer writing the user interface or so on and so on and so on. Really large projects that are millions of lines of code are going to be broken into thousands and thousands of functions and sub procedures. For right now we just looked at functions. Remember functions can re return one thing and you have to use return to send that back. Now how do I say what it's going to return? When I define the function I say function whatever name I want to call it you don't say sub because this is a function as boolean it's going to return a true false that's what error check does. Now if I look at payroll oops payrolls the other way here we are payroll it's returning a decimal it's also accepting hours and rate. Okay, so that is functions.